Welcome along to another Sat Alliance how to video on Small Business Server. This video will be the first in a series that will show you the actual installation process for Small Business Server 2003. So, to start off, I've put my CD into my new clean machine. Um, in this case, I'm using a virtual machine. Um, which you can also use. Uh, for more information about using a virtual machine with Small Business Server, please see one of our previous videos. If I now allow the machine to um, continue booting, you'll see that it boots up to the CD-ROM. Um, upon starting, since there is nothing on my hard disk, it will commence the boot process do a scan of the hardware. You can see that if you have um, additional drivers for the disk that you need to load, you would need to press F2 at startup so that you could load these disks. At this point, I don't need to do that, so the system will now continue booting up in this DOS mode. Once the setup has finished loading all the drivers, you'll be presented with a welcome to setup screen. This gives you the option to set up Windows or to repair an installation using the Recovery Console. At this stage we have no operating system on our hard disk so we want to install Windows. So all we do is simply press Enter. The next thing that we're presented with is the Microsoft End User Licensing Agreement. Um, we can push the page down to scroll through this. When we're ready we push the F8 key to accept and move on to the next step. We're now presented with the partitioning options for our hard disk. You can partition a hard disk in many different ways. You can create a single large C drive or you can split it up into multiple drives. Typically what we like to do is to split it into three drives. A C, a D and an E. C for Windows, D for Programs and E for the data. So to create a partition to install Windows on, I'm going to push C I'm going to specify the size of this partition. Um, there needs to be a minimum size for this, which you can work out based on your disk capacity. I'm going to make it, in this case, 10 megabytes. So I make it entry 10,000. And as you can see, I've got C plus a little bit of unpartitioned space, which I'll use for another drive further down in the installation process. I now select the partition that I've just created on which to install Windows and I hit enter. I'm now given the option of how I wish to format this. Normally I would select that you format this with NTFS. Uh, NTFS is required for Windows System Directory and Exchange. So basically all your drives should be NTFS. So we'll select to format the drive using the full NTFS format rather than the quick format. So select this option and simply hit enter. Now you'll see that Windows will go away and start formatting the drive. Once this is completed, we'll then start copying software to the drive that will then continue on with the installation process. The speed at which this happens depends greatly on the hardware systems that you've chosen to install in your machine. Typically, RAID systems and high performance disks will greatly reduce the time spent formatting and preparing the disks for use by Windows. So once the format process is complete, we'll now begin copying its program files onto the partition it has just formatted and continue on with the installation. As we can see here, it's now checking the C drive and as you can see it's now creating a list of files to be copied onto the new partition and as you can see it's now commencing its copy of all the files that it requires to complete the installation process. Once the file copy is complete, 
Windows now starts creating a basic environment from which that it can boot into and continue with the installation of Windows under the graphical user interface or GUI. Once this configuration is saved, the computer will automatically reboot it or if you press enter to initiate the reboot. Your computer will restart, but this time you don't want to boot from the CD, so you don't press any key. Failing the boot of a CD-ROM, the system will now boot into the graphical user interface and continue on with the installation of Windows Server. As you can see, Windows has now booted into the graphical user interface and will continue on with the installation until you are prompted for the next stage of input. Once the initial part of the installation is complete you'll be now presented with a window asking you to enter the regional and language options. Simply go into here and customize the setup for the region or location in which you currently are. Make sure that you make changes to both the top part and the bottom selection. Okay. When that's complete you press next. Here you can enter the name of your organization press next to continue and now we enter our product key and press next. When we have entered the appropriate product key we'll be asked to enter our computer name, this will be the name of our server. We can change this at a later stage during the install but it's best to ensure that you've chosen an appropriate server name beforehand. Um, the advice here is to exclude things like exclamation marks, underscores, keep it simple. Now enter your administrator password again it's important that you make a note of this for later reference if you have entered a password which doesn't conform to Windows standard then you'll be prompted to make a change if you want um, but in this case I'm happy to continue with the existing password once these options have been set you'll now be presented with the time and the date Again, make sure that your location is correct, make any changes that are appropriate, and hit the next button to continue. Windows will now continue with the installation of the remaining part of the graphical user interface. When this process is complete, the system will automatically be rebooted and Windows will once again come up. You should now see the login screen come up. You'll now log in with the administrator login and password that you created during the setup. You should now see the Windows Small Business Server setup recommence once you've started to log in. Finally, you should see the continuing the setup of Microsoft Small Business Server. At this point we'll end our video and we'll look to continue on with part two of our installing Small Business Server. This video has been created by Satin Alliance. My name is Robert Crane. If you have any questions please send me an email at robert at satinalliance.com.au. Thank you for watching.